have to thank you for introductions. And so, uh, just, just a second. Come on. It's a keynote presentation. So welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I want to share something. Yeah, okay. Already? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, my talk including the second topic. One, I will briefly introduce uh, uh, what we are doing in the range years. Second part, I will give some very rough idea what we want to do in the coming few years. Uh, so first, uh, let me introduce what we are doing in the range years. Actually, we are working with the spoken language translation. The years, as you you know, the current in, the many, in many years, many many machine translation approach have been experienced, including rule-based, statistical-based, and example-based, and also interlingual-based. Many many different approaches experienced. In my lab, we have been working with spoken language translation for many years and have experienced many methods. So this is a system we have developed in cooperation with Panasonic company. This system can translate the menu between Chinese, Japanese, and also English. We special developed it for the restaurant. If someone want to have a dinner in the restaurant, I don't know what's the meaning of the menu. The system can help you to translate the menu name between Chinese, Japanese, and English. And also, we developed other system. The left one, we developed it in cooperation with Carl's Luther University and also Carnegie Mellon University, USA. Uh, the system was demonstrated in the exhibition of science and technology several years ago. The second system we developed by our uh, laboratory is a new system using a PDA machine. So uh, now everyone knows the statistical machine translation method have been widely studied in the rest years. Now we also follow this approach in the rest years. The, the translation model is based on a very large scale corpus. So in the rest years, we participated in all evaluation organized by international workshop on spoken language translation named in short, IWSLT. So the performance is very good from the evaluation result. In 2007, according to the result of human evaluation, our system has the best one performance among all the participant systems. It's quite good. In 2008, we also, our system is also the number one according to the automatic evaluation of, uh, measures. And also, in last year, 2009, in all evaluation measures, our system always at the top one among all the participating system. This is the, the previous slide shows the result, the evaluation result uh, on the challenge task from Chinese to English. This is the result from English to Chinese, also telling task evaluation result. This is uh, the result based on the beta crops from Chinese to English. Based on our, trans our translation engine, we developed a spoken language translation based on the mobile phone device in cooperation with Nokia company. You know, Nokia company has a research center in Beijing. So I will show you the demo.
So the two speakers can see which is the other at the mobile phone screen. Oh, sorry. So uh, from the, the result of the performance evaluated by IWSLT, we can see the performance is so good. And also from the demo, you, you also can see the system is, works quite good. It's really very good in laboratory. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in most real situations. So why we have to analyze the problem? Because there are so many ill-form expressions out of vocabulary, unknown cultural customer, and also unknown new words, new word knowledge. It's quite difficult to understand between the two different native language speakers. So firstly, to change this situation, we collect many real speech dialogue from telephone uh, dialogue. We collect about over uh, 14,000 spontaneous telephone recordings in real scenarios, including the scenario of hotel reservation, restaurant, order, order menu, and uh, in the airport, the information accessing and uh, in total, the dialogue, we selected the, uh, the dialogue from the uh, 14 dialogues. We selected uh, about uh, 800 dialogues. And then we checked the corpus in very in detail, including the speaker, gender, Chinese syllable, and Chinese phonetic transcription, and prosodic boundaries, and no speech sounds, some noises, and the topic, and also dialogue act, and many, many tags in very in detail. We use the Prague tools to annotate this speech date. So we already published a paper to introduce this corpus base uh, in Adirac this year. Last month was held in March, that, that conference. Unfortunately, I have many questions currently. So how big of the corporate size is adequate? 10,000, 100,000, or 1 million? I don't know. Because there are many, many recorders. How many corpus are adequate? Let's see. Let me, let's see. Let's consider the boy to learn language. If we teach a boy, a very small boy, to study a new words, we just teach her or teach him one word, one example, one time is enough. He or she can very easily use it, no problem, very easy. So my point is the system needs the ability to learn from a very small size corpus and generalize the learned knowledge. It's more important, I think. And another question, as a human being, how we talk with foreigners and understand with each other? I think besides the text, we everyone use many other information, including the speech information, including the tongue, stress, dress, and many gestures of the speakers and the face expression. You may smile, you may use your head move to show some special meaning to with each other. Actually, if I cannot very clearly and lesson very clearly hear the speech of the speaker, I can guess the meaning from the face expression is some extent, I think. So Besides the text, the speech and body language information should be used in partial and translation model, I think, especially the interaction is necessary, I think. As a human being translator, the translator can interact with the speaker. If the translator interpreter cannot understand what the meaning the speaker says, he will always ask some question to the speaker. And after the he has understanding the real meaning he then translated the 
the, the input speech. Otherwise, we also cannot correctly translate the speaker's intention. But currently, in the experimental system, there is only one way. The speaker just gives the speech, input the speech into the system, but the system cannot understand exactly but understand the speaker's meaning. The system cannot have interaction between the speaker and the machine. It's a very difficult uh, procedure, I think. And also, uh, another question, can all knowledge from machine translation be learned from corpus? I think no, because the uh, corpus is always limited and uh, cannot include all knowledge the translator system need. So many knowledge cannot in, in, include in the corpus. Uh, such as some, some proper names, the new words, some noise. The computer system cannot identify the, which one is noisy, which one is a, a person name, which one is an organization name. So we need to tell the system this one is a person name. It's a very famous person. Maybe it's a not famous person. It's a very common people person name or organization names. We have to tell the computer, otherwise he cannot translate. I will, even as a human computer, if he or she don't know this is a person name, he also cannot translate it. So interaction between speaker and system is necessitated, and the system needs to learn from the procedure of human machine interaction. And also, even a system can correctly translate a sentence, can a listener always correctly understand the speaker's intention and meaning? I think sometimes not. For example, there is a, we always want to translate some full names or menu into another language. This is a, the, first, uh, the, the first example is a, uh, Chinese food. We say mantou in Chinese. Uh, several years ago, when I visited Roma city, I had a talk with a taxi driver. The driver asked me, what you eat every day? I told him I ate mantou. From all the uh, dictionary, I know the mantou word always translated into steamed word, steamed bread. So I told him I ate steamed bread. What is steamed bread? He don't know. I explained several times, but he also can, cannot understand because the bread is baked. But the steamed baked bread is very strange. So cannot understand me. I, I cannot show him a real mental because I don't take it. So it's very, very difficult to understand because there are two different concepts between in the different culture, I think. And also, you see, the menu of Fuji paper in Chinese restaurant, this is a very famous dish. Everyone want to eat it. But how to translate it? How to translate? If you translate just according to the character name, piece of wife and husband's love. No one can eat it. What's the meaning? So it's no real meaning, of course. And also this one, Tongzi in Chinese. Tongzi means a boy. It's a boy. Ji means a chicken. So according to the character, we can translate it, a children chicken without sex life. It's very, very strange. It's not dish of, it's not name of dish. It's very, very strange, cannot understand. So, and also for some special case, uh, in the last, uh, in, uh, uh, yesterday, in the, uh, in the workshop, I heard many of you laughed. But I don't, I understand the meaning of what you said, but I don't know why you laughed. Sometimes I laughed, but you never laughed. But you don't understand why I laughed, because there are different cultures and different understanding. 
So, so my point is the current translation or explanation sometimes becomes very, very necessitated. Because if we cannot understand the different culture, sometimes it's difficult to correct, exactly communicate with each other. So, and also do the current method can finally solve the all problems of natural language processing. I think that currently the situation is always like this, like a blind person to try to, fail, to find our elephant. Someone maybe touch an ear. The blind person maybe say, oh, the elephant just like a fun. If it's a blind person just touch the leg of the elephant, maybe he say, oh, the elephant is just like a tree. Oh, so the different person has a different understanding. So currently in the area of natural language processing, you can use SM, SVM model, you can use maximal entropy model, and language model, and rule-based, and syntax-based, and many, many different methods. But how we can resolve the problem, so complex problem in natural language understanding is parallel for the meaning, meaning translation or Carter explanation. It's quite difficult, I think. So we th I think we have to study the, pro the method that how a boy learns the language. According to the procedure to build the model, to simulate the procedure, if you just give the boy very few words, very few examples, very few time, he can very easily learn the language knowledge and can use the knowledge in his, in his talk, uh, talking and writing. So, in, to summarize, theoretical study the new method and approach to spoken language translation and, and uh, spoken language understanding and translation. There are many key techno techniques can be done, including rich information join method to understand the meaning of utterance or, or dialogue and meaning-based translation and uh, hard translation and explanation and uh, incremental knowledge learning because the, the system needs the ability to learn the knowledge from speak from the dialogues. And also for application, we can develop pra practical system based on the theoretical research and experiments and uh, including the dialogue information extraction, we should extract the, what the two speakers are speaking, what they are talking about, extract the information, and give the dialogue summarization, and multimodal human-machine interaction. I think it's very, very important for us, especially to build a very practical system. It's really, uh, very important technology, I think. So I think in the coming years, we have many things to do uh, oriented to the spoken language processing, not only including the spoken language translation, but also including the dialogue summarization and uh, information extraction based on the dialogue analysis. This is my point. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for your talk. And now, yeah, this was our last keynote presentation for Berlin Theme Tank. And we're looking forward to questions. Yep. Der sollte nicht gemutet sein. Yeah, so I, my question is mainly now about the, um, the, 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 the methods for combining these things. So, um, the most successful methods in um, spoken language translations, they are, are uh, co com completely local and statistical, right? Sure, very sure. Local and statistical. Sure. And although I may 
see a little bit of how you could, uh, from uh, more intensive data work, uh, analyzing, annotating um, lots of conversations, dialogues, with even cultural and pragmatic information, yeah? how you sure. could use a database. Yeah? Sure, sure. But now the question is of um, whether you believe now that uh, a mix of then statistical and maybe rule-based and even inferencing mechanisms would be needed, or whether you think that the um, um, statistical language modeling already has the possibilities to extend to these very high level, yeah, all sure, very sure. high level elements of language use. Sure. So, uh, your question is there? Was there a question? Yes. What do you... Okay, um, so, I mean, my, my question was the following, that uh, you are very successful, yeah? So you win the competitions and you do it by using uh, the, um, uh, the, the best and most advanced technology sure. uh, in, in uh, uh, statistical language modeling, both on the acoustic, on the, on the voice level, and sure. on the language level. Yeah? Sure, so sure. you combine sure. these methods and then sure, yeah. you, uh, you have trained your system on, on, on many, many dialogues. Yeah? Sure, sure. And now you say rightly, and I, 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 I think everybody would uh, um, immediately uh, see this and, and, and welcome the idea to bring in these other levels that are urgently needed, yeah? the, the, the cultural level, yeah? the, sure, sure. Um, uh, the pragmatic level, the adaptation to different communication situations in which uh, that, that you mentioned, so everybody would believe it. So do you believe now that other methods in addition to the language modeling you are already using are needed, or do you think that the statistical language models, by just having the right annotation of the dialogues, can within the next years extend yeah, to yeah. an automatic learning to all yeah, these? So uh, do you do you think that machine learning already has the tools for? for uh, this? I don't think so. So, uh, from my understanding, the so current model, including all machine learning methods. Almost use the, the same algorithms, just use a different feature. So I think this is not a practical method to solve such problem. So we have to, to build the new model from the connective uh, cognition viewpoint. I think. See my point. Is. So if we if we process a, a image. We also use the machine learning method. We just uh, use the different feature. We if we use the, we process the natural language problem. We also use the same algorithm, such as SVM model, just use the different feature. I think don't think this is a, a real practical approach. So we have to build a new, very new model. I think new algorithm. So. Oh. So more questions. I saw the first one over here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, so I've got a, 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 an observation on, your, on, on one of the th points you made, and also um, a kind of general, more, more general issue to, to, to talk about. Um, the, the, the observation is that you, you, you mentioned some, some interesting um, difficulties with translating menu items sure. and uh, one of the things that we we know particularly with Chinese menus in European countries is that we often resort to pictures yeah. so we solve the problem often of what is actually being described by showing a picture yeah. um, and I think this, this um, brings the the general question uh, I wanted to mention, which is, um, we say that a, a picture is, is worth a thousand words. And very often when we are um, trying to discuss things with people, uh, trying to explain points, uh, particularly when, when, ling when the language is not good enough, our language abilities are not good enough, is we resort to diagrams in order to, um, uh, to explain uh, what we're trying to say. 
And one of the features, uh, one of, perhaps one of the themes which we could be looking at for the future um, would be um, how to integrate um, um, the, the use of diagrams and the use of, 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 of drawing, drawings in general into um, our everyday interaction with, um, with machines. Okay, so the question for you would be, um, have you thought of, uh, of anything like that for, uh, for your particular ap approach? And the question to everybody else is, is this, is this theme of um, integrating um, translation and um, discussion of meaning with uh, d diagrams and pictures something which we, we, could, we could look at over the next 10 years? Yeah, okay, certainly. So I, I use the example to translate the manual. It's just uh, want to sh to explore my idea. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to just to translate. It. It's just uh, based on the characters. Just use this example to show my idea. Of course, sometimes you can use picture and other information to translate it. But always there is a new menu. Sometimes you don't have any picture. You don't have any knowledge according to, the, to your experience. So uh, we, you have, uh, everyone ha, ha, has to know what's the real meaning of the expression, including just, just maybe some new names of the, for the name or of a dish name, maybe a, a new food. It's difficult. Of course, I, I don't have any sp particular, very specific idea currently how to do it. I just want to collect the corpus and note it some information and how to combine with the original method. But sometimes we always failed. I think I don't have no specific idea. Okay, another question. Um, yeah, question. And be very close to the microphone. A yeah, question. <laughs> there is a church. Is it, is it close enough? Uh, a question and, and an observation. It stems from the recurring uh, necessity that many speakers, including you, have mentioned about the necessity to have better methods for learning language. Sure. Um, mathematic learning languages. Um, now, there's something that strikes me, the fact that actually we always more or less implicitly are using the implicit metaphor of humans, right? The way humans do. Now, humans don't learn language. There's ample evidence, and this is not undisputed mm -hmm. now, that humans do not, are not taught language. Humans mature language. Language is a cognitive function. And the relevance of this observation for, it, for our case is that if you want to have a machine that, what, what we have been doing up to now is building machines that starting from scratch, knowing nothing about a language, are trying to induce some kind of function by observing examples, data, and induce that function that can reproduce those data. And we all know that this is deemed to failure just because the best, the best we can do is reproduce those data, which is what you said. Again, this is not what humans, humans do. I mean, some of you would call this competence of language, no? Now, I think that the real, the real challenge is, is there any meaning to the, to the following terms? Building machines that have some initial knowledge of language and once exposed to language then can mature it so that learning or what we mean by learning comes closer to the actual cognitive and therefore biological notion of learning which is not doing it from scratch but deploying some initial knowledge, adapting it to current data. So the point, my point, uh, technical point is, do machines, are we capable of making machines good enough to have some initial knowledge about how language is so that they can deploy that knowledge in the course of you know, observing 
language exchanges, both spoken and textual, and then no language. Okay. <coughs> so. Yeah, I don't know how to answer your question. I don't know. But isn't it the point of, uh, that Martin made yesterday? Uh, that you, uh, yeah. Sort of the robotics scenario that they then learn uh, in, in, in a dialogue, machines yeah. learn yeah. in really in life situation? I very much appreciate this uh, view on how difficult things are and how we should be able to model it. Close but it. at the same time, I think, um, if we want to do that, and I think we should do that, we shouldn't do machine translation, because that hardens the problem even more. We first need to find out how to model individual language and language capacity. Translation is a special skill, as Martin was saying, and that's something that needs to be solved later on. It needs different capabilities. All right, so Wolfgang Walzer. Uh, because we are coming uh, close uh, to the end of the discussion, uh, I just uh, wanted to, to add one more idea. You said uh, we are discussing, you know, flight to the moon, and I think we, we have done so because we are looking, uh, let's say, to the next uh, framework of the European Commission funding and so on. Uh, but I think it's also uh, good to look not only to the moon, but now we have the vision going to the Mars. Uh, so uh, really a very bold vision, and I was uh, discussing with my colleague Kunze outside could we have something which is even much more uh, beyond? And uh, I think uh, I got a lot of evidence from your talk, but also uh, from the comments, that uh, I think really turning to spontaneous speech, incremental production of speech um, uh, would be, uh, and the retrieval of speech would be an uh, excellent topic, because my very bold vision, I gave a talk two years ago at the Gutenberg, Gutenberg Assembly. Uh, it was not about language process but about the invention of Gutenberg. And I said, you know, let's consider, we want to get rid of text and of reading and of writing. Why? Because when we started out, we were all society. Everything was only speech. There was no, no writing and so on. And no reading. Reading, you know, is something we have to, to learn very hard. And uh, what Gutenberg did first, you know, start uh, reproducing, you know, uh, ideas in writing. So this can be done with speech now. We can have digital uh, files of speech, no problem. We can store it. The only problem, we want to do computation with it, and we don't uh, want to uh, uh, retrieve it. That's the only benefit we have right now in the digital age uh, with uh, written information, uh, text. And uh, I think we are close. I think uh, going to the uh, ma uh, Mars, from my uh, point of view, in 20 years could be the very bold vision. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We are going back to a completely digital society, but we don't need any writing, any reading, because you can retrieve on the spot everything. And uh, as we know, speech has a much more emotional emphasis. We lose information when we go uh, code this uh, into writing. And th this could be a real, I mean, because it's human nature. When we started out without computers, we, we had uh, only speech. Yeah? Then we went to the Gutenberg age. But maybe we are very close, yeah? 20 years, maybe 50 years, that we can uh, avoid writing and reading. So that means we have language technology to enable the oral society again. So language, no, no but that, that, it's, it's, it, no, it, it, back to dudes, it's a, it's, it's a very important point. We had this workshop with India, and they, they have, exactly, they have this problem, and they have a problem that people cannot read and write. So they're really looking forward to going back to the oral society to, um, for example, prevent social climate change. 
I think the Greek historians would want to contradict this. They see, say that the success of the Western uh, civilization is based on their, them being able to write and put into printing in one way or another, on stones or whatever you call it. And the principle of text I would not want to uh, inferiorate, nor would I want to listen to everything that was being said because frankly that would die when, as soon as it leaves my ears. I mean, need something on any type of textual matter in order to remember things. And actually, um, I believe that there's so much to solve textually in our field that we cannot really abandon it for speech all alone. Uh, it, was not, it was not abandoning speech. It was just enabling the oral society, where, where we have, in speech, we have all our emotions, and we, we, miss, uh, we miss many emotions in text, um, frankly speaking. Uh, and not a question, but a comment, uh, coming back to the discussion uh, uh, a little bit earlier. Um, um, we talk so much about machine learning and, and applying, uh, applying statistical methods. I think it's important to, to introduce more uh, the term teach. Uh, I was inspired by this, this photo uh, with this baby. I mean, if you expose it to a corpus, you can expose it for many years to a corpus, which lets us be just a tape recording of what ever was said, if you don't uh, expose it to a situation and to the teaching of the parents, it won't learn the language. I mean, uh, uh, th there might be a dog in the family and, and, and the child sees it and it says dog, and then they go uh, for a walk and it sees a horse and the child says dog, and then the mama says, no, not a dog, it's a horse. So uh, why don't we, um, I may, may say it uh, pr provocative. Uh, I think uh, machine learning uh, automatically is a dead end. Uh, what we should, should start again really is teaching the machine. Now we uh, uh, do research about language and we input it like parents do in fact. And nobody I think learns language just by listening to something. Either he is ex exposed to a situation where he understands, aha, this, the, the, the words must mean such and such, or there is a teacher. Uh, uh, who, who tells him, now, this is that and that. All right, so I look, I mean, we have to be in a sort of in a timely fashion. So again, thank you very much for thank the you. keynote presentation. Just put it, yeah. take it out. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much.